Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anasha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. Now, this is episode 60, and before we start, I want to just say I'm trying something a little bit different with this episode. I recently came into a, a Logitech headset that has a microphone built into it, and I wanted to see if recording with the headset's microphone sounds any different or better than the microphone that actually comes with my computer. Not comes with my computer. Because that microphone hears everything. I mean the microphone that I usually use to record. So, because of the nature of the headset, there may be some random click noises, but not static or anything like with my other microphone. Because my main recording microphone is not actually... My laptop's not strong enough to power my main microphone. But, this is just a headset, and it seems to be doing okay. So I figured I'd do at least one episode of Homestuck using the headset, and see what you guys think. So, in the last episode, Jack Noir just killed John's dad and Rose's mom. And we have to go be future Jack Noir, which I... Okay, this is happening. You are now future Jack Noir. Presently, you are trapped in a single moment, which increasingly feels like an eternity. Your boredom is surpassed only by your all-consuming rage and contempt for existence itself. Hours ago, you entered an unfamiliar session. You killed a thousand robotic assailants. You destroyed twelve planets with ease, methodically and cyclically, like a single stained hand of a defective clock smearing each number it passes. You reduced Prospect and Durst to dust and murdered a whole bunch of alien kids in yellow and purple pajamas. Your war path of absolute devastation had only begun to be blazed. There were still miles and bloody miles to send forth. But when the dust of Durst settled, this infuriating fairy appeared out of thin air and froze you in time. But she can't keep you like this forever, and when she finally lets you go, you will be ready. What will you do? Aside from nothing, that is. Jack, wait. You attempt to be patient. You fail miserably. Pieradia. You are now the Maid of Time, recently resurrected from the Crypt of Durst. Your name is Aradia Megiddo, and for the first time in your life, you feel truly alive. You have just incapacitated Jack Noir with a spell, but a demon so powerful requires your full concentration to subdue. He will break free any moment. You may release him and die now, or you may continue to hold him and die later. What will you do? Aside from die, that is. Aradia, release him. She's gone! There seems to be something green in the distance. You're done with dying! Soon, friends will arrive. They will need your help. New! Whose memory is this? It appears to be yours. At least that's how it begins. Enter the bubble. Wait a minute. This is not specifically your memory. It's hers. Da -da -da -da. As she briefly has a nose. And a whip. Swoop. Frog ruins. Cow ruins. And a horn. <laughs> and a wallet? A radio report discovery. So that's how she got that Bing Crosby laptop. Solix! Hey, what's up, A.A.? You'll never guess what I just found. Won't I? I doubt it. Was it the match the matching ruins ruin site? Um Yes. How did you know? I don't know, just a weird feeling. I feel like we had this conversation before and that's what it was about. Yeah, me too. What do you think it means? Probably nothing, but now not only does it feel like we had this conversation before, but it's going differently this time. So it's extra weird. Maybe your voices maybe your voices are involved? I don't know, maybe. Maybe yours are too? I don't hear a goddamn thing, do you? Wait. Yes, yeah, she's very quiet, though I can't tell what she's saying. Oh well. Why don't we just pretend there is no spooky paranormal phenomena going on it just once and talk about what you wanted to talk about? Good idea! 
Okay, do you remember what we talked about regarding Kanai's ruins? Sorta. I asked you for help in understanding the glyphs. I guess. Are you just being difficult or do you really not remember? I guess I don't find the whole mystery of the ruins as exciting as you, okay? Well, obviously! But I really appreciate your help anyway. Sure. How can I help then? Well, you said that you need another set of glyphs to make sense of them. You speculated that there might be another set of ruins. You even guessed they would be blue! Turns out you were right. Don't you think that's pretty cool? Oh yeah, I am also about that for sure, but... I can't shake the feeling these ruins are going to be nothing but trouble for you. Or for us. Would you say that about everything? That's because it's fucking true about everything! No, it's not! I did find some other neat things down here too, which are strange, but quite harmless and not foreboding in the least! Like what? Like this amazing hat! It's an authentic archaeologist hat, it's so hard to find them in this style. There are no horn holes, but I love it anyway, it's great. Pretty sweet, eh? Hey, didn't you also find some bits and pieces of your bizarre robot doppelganger? I wasn't going to tell you about that. Damn it, how did you know? I don't know, I just remembered some more shit about this discovery. God, sorry. This is stupid. Yeah, well, I guess this is the kind of shit you have to deal with when two psychics talk to each other about stuff. Maybe. Why don't we pick this up again later when we're not feeling so weird? Well, okay. Apocalypse Arisen began showing twin Armageddon's and Apocalypse Arisen. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, I wanted to give you both the chance to remember, but it doesn't look like this is going anywhere. What the fuck? Wow, what? Is it coming back yet? It's what? Coming back? Who are you? Whoa, hold on. Why am I talking like you suddenly? This is a memory, and a dream bubble. That's right. Oh, that doesn't really answer my question, but okay. You changed your voice because you remembered like I did. Remembered what? That I died! This is my memory, and also hers. But I went on to become the robot whose remains are in this crater, whereas she did not. I don't actually know her story or how she got here, but for me, this was the end of the road. This is the afterlife. Well, shit. So I guess that I'm dead too? Nope! You're just asleep. You are also blind. Holy shit, I can't see! Yes, that's what being blind means! Wow, awesome! Way to be awesomely sympathetic to my terrible new problem, A.A. Eh? Solus, will you shut up and stop being so tragic for once? You knew this was going to happen. Your prophecies of personal doom were practically all you ever talked about. I think you were looking forward to this, honestly. She's right. I can't believe this. It's almost as if I'm getting... double teamed. Damn, that didn't feel right at all. I guess I'm gonna have to retire the whole bifurcation gimmick, puns and all. Actually, that's kind of a relief. Maybe you're right. Am I feeling better about this already? Great! You should be able to relax now that you've been released from the curse of your vision twofold, just like you said you'd be. You are now merely doomed! Oh. That's... awesome? Being doomed isn't that bad. I spent most of my life that way, remember? At least you have the luxury of understanding. And the best part about being doomed is you only have to put up with it until you die. That's the spirit! <laughs> Actually, I guess I don't have to keep talking like I'm doomed anymore, do I? Nope! This is so weird, what am I even listening to here? Fuck, I cannot believe I just made that face. Ha 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 ha. God damn it. Oh yeah, also, why the fuck are my teeth missing? I... don't know? Okay, well, great. Glad we got to the fucking bottom of that mystery. 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 Man, I can't even listen anymore if I try. Please don't laugh. I can tell you guys are both enjoying this. I can smell it from my new blind guy nose powers. Really? No, not literally, I was joking. I mean, not yet. Maybe I'll ask TZ about it when I wake up, though. Hey, what was that noise? What noise? I think someone else is here. Oh, it's Jade! Jade? What the fuck? Who's Jade? She's one of the humans we met after you died. Okay. I guess I'm out of the loop on chronology for once. That's fine, you'll catch up. Um, hey guys, I hope I'm not interrupting! Well, yeah, you kind of were. Sort of a reunion of close to... Party friends going on here, but no big deal, I guess. Oh no, I can leave. No, don't! Solux, try to be polite. There's no reason at all for you to feel hostile towards them anymore. Jade is very nice, and she did nothing wrong. None of them did, so when you wake up, you should try to reconcile with them, or at the very least, just say hello. Did you? Did I what? Be nice to them or whatever you before you exploded. Well, no, but I should have. I did with you before I left, didn't I? I guess so. <gasps> this is awkward. Shush, you! What actually happened after I died? It sounds complicated. It is! I'll get you up to speed, I promise, but guys, come on, let's not scare away our guests. Okay, then I'll shut up. I think one of Radius saying things is more than enough, probably. You can say that again. <laughs> if 
But I mean, don't say it again literally, because that's kind of the whole point and would completely contradict- Oh my god, shut up! It's okay, I can take an another nap later when you guys aren't busy. No, Jade, it's okay, please stay. I'm curious about why you're here. Well, I've just been enjoying these little naps more and more lately. Each time I go to sleep, I meet more new people and learn so much. But I still can't get Car Cat to take a nap. Boy, talk about a guy who was anti-nap. <laughs> yeah, what a douche. Seriously, he's the douchiest of crabby crabs who ever douched a big douchey crab. LOL. But yeah, it's, it's been fun. I should really thank Feffery again for setting it up so we could meet like this. Wait, FF is here? Yep. Oh god, why didn't that occur to me? Where is she? Um, probably in another bubble. But you'll find her. Maybe during your next nap. Well, shit, why can't I just go glove around out there in the ring and find her now? I mean, aside from the fact that I'm blind and completely useless. Navigating between bubbles is difficult here. It's better to drift between them naturally as they intersect, not spatially, but through common points in memory. To navigate the furthest ring, you ha need to have mastered the flow of time. That's why I'm here. I'm alive again, so I may assist the dead in this way. Huh. Jay, tell me, have you seen me here before? I mean, me dressed like I am now, wearing my godhood. Yeah, you were really nice and helpful. Wait, wait, you're wearing a godhood? Why didn't you tell me that? What gives? Or that you came back to life? I'm wearing a hood and have butterfly wings. What else would you like to know? Man, being blind is dumb. Can I like, grope you or something to get up to date on your appearance? Would that be weird? Yes, Solux, that would probably be pretty weird. I think your outfit looks cute. I love your wings, too. Thank you, your outfit is quite spiffy, too. I like that skirt a lot, especially. Is, is that a skirt? I am not sure. Rolling my eyes. This is what I would be doing if that were possible. Shh. Hey, come on, you were making a point. Yes, okay. You see, those encounters you had with me before have not happened for me yet, because I've only just arrived. Time follows strange paths here as does space. If you travel a great, uh, great enough distance, you may discover you are also traveling either backwards or forwards in time as well. Just, just as if you stay in one place for too long, the geometry of space surrounding you will become unreliable. You may swat the air to your left and discover you have just slapped yourself. The only way to make sense of it is to understand either, pro either property very well. And since I am new here, I have some learning to do just like everyone else. But I do know one thing. What? I knew the first bubble I would enter would be an important one for us to visit. What's so important about it? Hang on, we're moving to a new memory. Hold that thought. It is important because it will help us begin to understand why we are all here. What do you mean, why are we all here? You mean in the afterlife? That's easy. Because she's asleep, she's dead, you're alive, and I'm blind. Couldn't be simpler. No, no. Not why we're here in this bubble now, but why we all exist in the first place, and why we all went on this adventure together. Oh, that. There's much to understand, and I believe it all begins with one sequence of events. Watching will help those who've passed to understand the purpose of their sacrifice, and those still living to understand what must be done to complete the journey still ahead. We will let these memories lead the way. Are you guys ready? Oof. I'm ready! Okay, let's allow the next journey to take shape. I believe it is Kanaya's. I will reprise my role in the conversation I had with her shortly after I discovered the ruins. Everybody hide and try not to spoil it for her until she remembers. <laughs> hey, Kanaya! There's something I want to give you. Oh, excuse me. Hey, Kanaya, there's something I want to give you. Oh, really? Yes, it's something very odd I found when I discovered the ruins the other night. I don't know what its archaeological significance is yet, but I suspect you will be able to repair it. This is a dream, isn't it? What? Wow! I, I mean, wow, you figured that out fast. It seems obvious. Either I'm sleeping or I'm dead. Which is it? Oh, I'm sure you are alive. You're unconscious now. We'll likely wake up as your new self very soon. My new self? Yes, you are undergoing a metamorphosis which you have been groomed for since you were very young, much like I was for my various personal iterations, including this one. You mean being a ghost and then a frog and then a robot and then a fairy? Yes, but it sure sounds silly when you list them all like that. Kind of. What do you mean we have been groomed? Well, that is what we are all about to find out, if you will oblige us by continuing with this memory. Okay, what do I do? Why don't we go through this conversation again to the best of our recollection? But I guess rather than acting it out, we could just talk about it. The old-fashioned way. Was what we were attempting before not old-fashioned? I have no idea. It seems to me the nature of the afterlife is probably very old-fashioned. Maybe even the most old-fashioned the thing can get. Haha, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, though. Yes, then. 
This was when you were about to give me that unusual gift from the ruins. Yes, I then had Solus deliver the pieces so to you so you could stitch it back up. Solus, that is your cue. Come out and play the part. So we don't have to hide anymore? No, of course not. Obviously the jig is up. Everyone can come out now. Yay! So, like... Okay, so I'm supposed to act out like what I did before when I brought her these shitty doll parts. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I'm still not sure already. I'm uh, still not sure already. Are we supposed to be role-playing? No, guys, come on. This isn't that complicated. We're just revisiting the past just like we would if we were talking about it. But it just so happens we can watch it happen as we talk about it. And as a matter of fact, this story does involve a role-playing game, but not in that way. This is kind of stupid. You're stupid and you sound stupid. Holy fish, I do that What the fuck is this now? So wait, why the fuck did my pass out so full of all the pee suddenly? I don't know, but you may be waking up soon. Oh, okay, great, so I will miss the rest of the cool city that day. Maybe not if we hurry this along. Wait, before we do, hi, Kanaya, it's nice to meet you. Hi, Jade, uh, what is that thing you're wearing? You don't like it? No, I didn't mean to sound disapproving, but I do think more colorful apparel suits you better. Yes, I know you told me. I did? Guess what, you probably haven't yet, not from your perspective. I could not help but overhear you were sleeping now. You told me about- you told me all about what happened after you woke up. About what? About how you turned into a vampire. What's a vampire? This is ridiculous. Solix is right. I- I mean Solix. Can I tell us what happened next? There isn't much to say. I repaired the doll and made him a nice outfit, with a far more becoming palette and fit than that absurd tatters he was found in. I thought, at least. Yes? Uh, should there be anything else to the story? Not really. Isn't that Dave's puppet? Yes. Ah, sis, I guess I'm out of here. Bye, Solix. See you later, everybody. Bye! Anyway, that is all I can remember. I quickly began to find the doll unnerving, so I put him away. To my knowledge, he's remained secure in my block ever since. Has he been relevant in some way? Guys, why do you have Dave's puppet? What is going on here? Yes, Aridia, it seems you have some foreknowledge of this narrative. Maybe you can tell us why any of this is important? This is only a piece of the story. The other pieces will fall into place with successive memories, and it will all become clear. But yes, alright, I will eliminate some suspense and try to serve as a better guide on this tour through the catacombs of our collective subconscious. The separate tunnels we once traveled in the... Blah, blah, blah. We once traveled in the dark as individuals, we now retrace together with a torch. On the walls, we illuminate the runes which describe a convoluted origin story, an origin we participated in. We were spurred to these actions by that which was being originated, and incited to acts of revenge as we were turned against each other. I don't remember this. I mean, I remember getting jumped off the cliff by my legs, but not the thing I'm doing now. No, our manipulator disguises tracks well. Do I have to lie on the floor like this? Is that important? No, Tavros, you can get up. Also, can we, or at least I, be not in this memory because it's one that's not as great as most. We will leave it soon, but you were doing something very important here. What was I doing? Writing a part of the code. An incomplete fragment consisting of four symbols, comprising the first word of a binary refrain, a pair of sounds emerging from the belly of a fabled tyrant's menace. But he authored only one sound of the pair. I would write the other. Oh, was it TikTok? In the set of my ruined hive, I scrawled my part of the code, completing the phrase of legend. The persisting sound said to accompany the ultimate demise of the tyrant less an arm and an eye. But even these eight characters, the scrawlings of charge, were still but half the code. Is it more TikTok? What is this, break? TikTok break? Egg? Bake egg? What is, what is that? There was another half by Scourge in two parts. One part, three symbols. What the hell is this? Heads. What is the... And the other... Five. 
Why the scale was tipped in this way between sisters, I cannot say. Each fragment will be transcribed in our rule books, sealing the collaboration between Rust Bloods and Blue Bloods. Blue, blue, blue Bloods. Completing the code for our session's architect. Not exactly. There was another fragment. Oh? Yes, an additional eight symbols. From a wild card source, I suppose. Oh, shit. Is that a picture of the fucking Joker? It came from a timeline not meant to happen. The one I came from to ensure it wouldn't. Thus sealing my fate. Honk honk! Oh. I believe the fragment was gibberish from a lunatic after completing his rampage through our session. Since it was not part of the scripted chronology, I was oblivious until it was too late to stop it. Not that it would matter if I did, the timeline had already gone astray. I pieced together what had happened by sleuthing the various scenes. And discovered the text which the code was recorded in. Oops, some more people disappeared. I decided to return to the Alpha timeline with the text, as evidence for his madness, I guess. In the Alpha timeline, this text was destroyed in an explosion caused by a computer virus. This explosion did not take place in, on my timeline. I identified this event as the difference prompting the offshoot, and returned to our planet via the Reckoning just as I did at the end of my life. Though that time deliberately to influence events quietly to make sure it happened, and later joined the rest of our doomed selves to, def to help defeat the king. The others surely had similar responsibilities along the way. More honks. As for the book, I lost track of it shortly after I arrived. Yes, we all lost track of our books. They were gathered serotypically by agents assigned to the task. And in the, veil, in the veil, their codes were merged with the ghost imprints of other mysterious artifacts. Our first guardian was brought to life on the sea to pass through Sky's final gate of defense, the first to find Alternia. Okay, so I'm going to stop this episode here. And in the next episode, we're going to be Scratch. And I'm probably going to go back to my normal microphone, just in case this one sounds fucked up. So, this has been Anashi Sasuke. Thank you guys for sticking around for episode 60 of Let's Read Homestuck. And in the next episode, we might be about to start an intermission. And I might try to do the whole intermission in one episode. But I'm pretty sure this intermission is longer than the last one, and I will hurt myself trying. So... Thank y'all for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. Later.